In this video, we're taking a look at the early Ford V8 Foundation Museum in Auburn, Indiana, specifically taking a close look at the hot rod and race car section, which has some cool cars on display and tons of great and extremely rare flathead speed parts. As you're headed toward the museum, you'll notice that the sidewalk is lined with flathead cylinder heads leading you right to the front door. I had a chance to tour this museum because I was a part of the Great Race Spring Regional Rally and it was held in Auburn, Indiana, which is an absolute automotive town. Now, this is the home of the Auburn automobile, but there's lots of great things to see here. There's multiple museums, including this one, and this one happens to be one of my favorites because it has a lot of cool hot rod history, and really that's because Ford played a big part in early hot rods. The flathead Ford V8 was a pioneer in the hot rod world, and then, you know, the overhead valve V8s came out, and small block Chevys and so on down the line, and the Ford Flathead kind of got phased out of the hot rod world, except for traditional hot rods. And that's where this really comes into play, is some of these parts and some of these pieces that are hanging on the walls and on display in this museum are extremely rare. We're gonna walk through the hot rod section thoroughly, and then we're gonna just kind of breeze through some of the other areas in the museum, because I want you to see this for yourself. I want you to go if you're ever in the area, you need to check out this museum and the other museums in Auburn, Indiana. So uh, we're going to start this off by looking inside of this little workshop area. The focal point in this little area is this old dirt track car. So this is like a late 30s Ford. You can see right there, it's got a 24 stud flathead V8 in it with Edelbrock aluminum heads. Just a single two barrel carburetor. That's what a lot of these guys ran back in the day. but. You can see this thing has got some pretty awesome vintage pieces on it and the old school paint job. You can see the netting across the windshield, the old roll bars. Look how huge those tubes are. The banjo steering wheel. This thing is a really cool piece and it looks pretty authentic. You know, it's got some later model tires, but still a really neat car. And then we we'll walk around here and there's just tons of cool stuff, tons of parts and pieces. And check out this engine. This is kind of like a display engine with the little tubes that raise the intake manifold up so you can see down in the valley there. And then a rear end set up with the torque tube, uh, some old tires and wheels, some old tools and things like that. Really neat little section of this museum that gives you an idea of what people were working with back in the day. Cutaways are always cool and they've got a bunch of them here at this museum. They've got transmission cutaways, they've got engine cutaways, they've got a lot of stuff. That you can just sit here and stare at this and really figure out how this stuff works. And that's the reason they did this back in the day was a lot of this stuff was new technology. Just thinking about drum brakes, hydraulic drum brakes was new technology when the Ford Flathead V8 came out. So, you know, seeing these cutaways is really neat. And then look at this wall of die cast trucks. I mean, this is incredible. I don't know where this collection came from, but it is outstanding. You could just look through each row. I mean, it is so cool. There's also some cool Ford tractors on display, but right over here is the part where we're going to focus. This is the hot rod and speed parts area, and it starts off with this little track roadster. This is a 1926, so this is based off of a Ford Model T, and the old hot rodders would make these things low. They would make them sleek, and you can see this one actually has a small flathead V8 in it. This is a V860. The 60 designated 60 horsepower but they could crank out a little bit more with some good heads, a little bit more fuel, a little bit better spark. You know, you could make some decent power with these little bitty engines. This got my attention, of course, old drag racing trophies. If we look down here at the bottom, this little plaque, this came from Bunker Hill Drag Strip, 1961. Really neat that it's actually got the driver's name on it. Then we've got a few others with the dragster on top. That's always cool. Now, I didn't see any history with this miniature race car, but I thought it was pretty cool. They've got a little figurine in there. Now, here's a better look at one of these V860 engines. This one's got some good speed parts on it, including Edelbrock aluminum heads and an Edelbrock twin carburetor intake. And check out this dual magneto drive. That's a really rare piece. So here's the more conventional flathead V8. This is a 24 stud V8, which was 1938 and later. This one's got some speed parts on it as well. And then if we look up here, there's a kind of a random intake that looks like it was supposed to have two carburetors, but it only has one. And then we've got some Lincoln Zephyr cylinder heads hanging on the wall. I'm not sure what we're looking at there, but the Lincoln Zephyr cylinder heads are pretty cool because these were V12 engines. 
These things didn't make a tremendous amount of power, but they're cool to look at. The next race car actually doesn't have a V8 in it. This is based off of a Ford Model A or Model B four-cylinder engine, and you can see that it has a Riley racing conversion on it. This is pretty high-tech stuff for back in the day. The big header, the dual carburetors, this was a really high-end race car. You can see the bodywork on this thing. This is all stuff from back in the day. This is a very, very old race car that survived, and they have redone it. They've used some original parts, mostly original parts, actually, and they have just done what they can to preserve it and restore it and bring it back to this history. Here's a little bit of history that it shows right here, dating back to 1937. So this car ran back then and through the 1940s, and who knows what happened between then and now, but I'm glad to see that this thing survived. If we look a little closer on the old race car, you can see the mesh in front of the grill area. You'll also see that there's no front brakes on this car. It's got a set of custom racing wire wheels on it, front and back. The suspension on the back, that's pretty much what a Ford Model A or Model T would have had. But look right here, these are some pretty high-end parts. It's got this log style intake manifold with two carburetors. It's got some pretty cool stuff on it. And if we look at the overall view of this thing, check out that short wheelbase, the staggered tire size. This is a pretty cool piece. Here's another cool vintage race car, dirt track car with some killer vintage speed parts on it. You can see right off the bat inside of this thing, the vintage upholstery, the old flat four spoke steering wheel, the old gauges. You've got an exposed transmission down here. This thing certainly was not safe back in the day, but that's what race cars were. They were for tough guys and you know, a lot of people didn't make it out alive. A lot of these cars didn't make it out alive, which is what makes this impressive that this car survived. So take a look at that grill shell, the front suspension, again, no front brakes. It's got these custom wire wheels and those actually look like motorcycle tires on the front. And then it's got some Firestone racing tires on the back. But look at this engine. I have no idea what I'm looking at here. I see spark plugs way down in the jugs. It's got two carburetors on it and what appears to be an overhead camshaft. So that's a pretty high end engine. You might be able to help me out in the comments, but this thing is a really cool, very, very authentic piece. So let's get started looking at the vintage speed equipment in this section of the museum. Tons of cool stuff here, including these Hot and Sullivan engineering cylinder heads. And then you've got a set of rocket cylinder heads and another pair of cast iron heads sitting right here as well. These are all 24 stud for a later model flathead V8. Then we've got this awesome collection of twin carburetor intake manifolds, starting with an Edelbrock Super, multi-power, never heard of that one, a Wyand. And then this one down here is still wearing some old blue paint. This one I've never heard of. This says Hexagon Tool. So this was just a privately made piece. You can see down here on this, it says that the carburetors mount backwards and that the manifold was designed for the 1935 Miller Ford race car, which was front wheel drive and the engine was reversed in the chassis. Now that is really cool. That's a cool note because I wouldn't have even noticed that on this intake manifold. Moving on in the manifolds, this one looks like it says roof on there. I'm not sure about that one. I've never seen that brand before. And then we've got a triple carburetor Evans. And then let's see another triple carb. This is an Offenhauser. Then we've got a twin carb tornado intake with the old paint on it, a single four barrel Offenhauser, and then a single four barrel Grand Core. And then check this out, Ralph's Muffler Shops. Just a muffler shop that made intake manifolds for flathead V8s. Here we've got some more speed parts laying on the table. We've got Speedway cylinder heads. We've got an Eddie Meyer intake manifold. This intake doesn't actually have any casting marks on it. Then we've got one that just says regular. We've got an Eddie Meyer twin carburetor riser and an old Wyand high rise dual carburetor intake. Now here's a cool intake. This has got four Stromberg carburetors with cool little velocity stacks. That is an amazing piece. And this looks like it's in as found condition. It's not been polished or cleaned up or anything. Super cool. Then we've got a Tattersfield four carburetor intake, an Evans four carburetor intake, and a Sharp four carburetor intake. Really rare stuff. You don't often see the four carburetor stuff. Then you see an SAE cylinder head and an SAE twin carburetor manifold. Here's another SAE product and it shows all sorts of different lettering down here, which includes the name Schrager Automotive based out of Los Angeles. Now here's a set of heads I've never seen before. It says Federal Mogul Thermoflow on there. And it looks like these are made out of brass or copper. Never seen anything like that. 
Then we've got some 21 stud aftermarket heads, some Evans. Now this is probably my favorite piece in the whole collection. This is an aluminum cylinder head that looks just like a factory cast iron piece. And notice it says Canada down there on the bottom. And that's because in Canada, aluminum cylinder heads were available on flathead V8s, except the ones that were original made by Ford actually said made in Canada on them. This one just says Canada. So the placard that was with this said, look in the mirror behind the head and you can see in there in reverse, it says Wyand. So this was actually a cheater cylinder head back when they had rules about, you know, you couldn't run aftermarket heads. This was a head that flowed better than factory and was lighter than the factory, but was able to sneak past the rules. And the cylinder head next to it is actually a finned cylinder head that has been shaved clean because the rules dictated no finned cylinder heads. Then we've got a selection of really great pieces. We've got Navarro, we've got Thixton, cylinder heads, intake manifolds, lots of cool stuff to look at. Inside these cases, there's all sorts of smaller pieces, including several types of magnetos, including a twin drive, lots of rare stuff right here. And then this case has a ton of really cool vintage speed parts that look like they were taken straight out of an old race car. We've got Ilco pieces, we've got stuff that's still in the package, an old helmet, and then up here we've got some vintage fuel injection pieces, which are really rare on flathead stuff. Not a lot of people ran mechanical fuel injection back in the day, but we've got a Scott injector, we've got a Scott pump, we've got all sorts of really rare, very valuable stuff. And notice that some of these pieces would even bolt to a factory type intake manifold. In addition to the racing and hot rod section, there's a huge display of awesome cars and trucks here at the museum. And it ranges from 1932, which is when the flathead Ford V8 came out, and goes to 1953, which was the last year that you could get a flathead V8 in a passenger car. So lots of cool stuff in here, including some Mercury's. Uh, here we've got a nice line of the 49 to 53 Fords, including a really, really slick Crest liner. You don't see very many Crest liners out there. And just a plain Jane, 49 to 50 Ford. These cars made great hot rods back in the day and also made really cool customs. The most impressive parts of the museum is the 1936 dealership setup. So in a separate section of the museum, it's all 1936. Everything there is 36, including all the cars on display, the desk, all of the things there are from a 1936 Ford dealership. So this is a really neat display. And this is how it was back in the day. So you've got trucks on display, you've got every single model of 1936 Ford that you could get. You've got Roadster, you've got a Cabriolet, you've got all the different types of sedans, two-door, four-door, convertible sedan, Phaeton, which is a really rare piece. You've got the coupes, five-window coupe and a three-window coupe. And then the crown jewel of the whole collection, which is on the spinning display, is the stainless car. This is one of only six built, and these were built by Allegheny Steel, and they were responsible for doing a lot of the stamping for Ford Motor Company, and they built six of these cars with a stainless steel body. Now, they were not polished back in the day. They were just kind of a raw, natural finish, but when this car was restored, there was a lot of metal work that had to be done, so it ended up getting a full polish to kind of, I don't want to say hide the repairs, but it definitely couldn't be raw anymore because the car had to be worked. But this thing looks so cool in its polished finish. I mean, it just looks like chrome. And this thing is definitely the highlight of the whole museum. And it's something you just got to see in person to really appreciate it. So really cool collection of cars from 1932 to 1953. Cars, trucks, tractors, race cars, a little bit of everything here. So I wanted to show you just enough to kind of get you interested because if you're ever in the area, you gotta stop at this museum. It's in Auburn, Indiana, and it's called the Early Ford Foundation Museum. This place is growing, this place is getting popular. It's not been around all that long, but it's definitely something you need to check out. It's something you gotta see for yourself to truly appreciate this collection of classic Fords.